All right, guys, last time we were here, caught a halibut, but while I was out here, I saw a bunch of marks that looked like white sea bass. So today I brought squid because I didn't have any bait to throw at them last time. So uh, thank you, Leroy, for hooking up with the squid. Those marks, look at those marks. Same ones I saw last time. Oh, fish, fish. Fish. Fish on. Might be a shark, I don't know. I don't think maybe. It's a halibut, heel and drag. Geez, not even, not even 10 minutes. Oh, he's rowdy. It's legal. Or maybe not. Yeah, he's legal. He's legal. Woo! Let's go, legal halibut. All right, guys, yep. It's barely legal, but it's a start. It's definitely a start. 24 inches, guys, 24 inches. All right, first keeper of the day, guys. 24 inches. Not too bad. I'll take it. Good start, good start. Already bleeding him out. What size is that? 24 inches. Well, that was quick. Didn't even have to use the gaff. Let's do that again. And last time I was out here, I was getting real tore apart by sharks in terms of my bait, <laughs> not me. And I decided to up to 40 pound test based on recommendation from other anglers. So hopefully that, that works out, but this time I brought like a dozen liters versus the only six that I brought last time when we caught that 35 incher. Hopefully we can catch something similar today. And I put all of my liters on this fun noodle and I actually put Velcro on the end and Velcro under my seat all the way under so it secures it even for a beach launch. So it's actually a pretty game changer. Hope you guys like that idea. But I have two of them filled with leaders and sabikis to keep it nice and clean on the deck because when you're on a kayak, you don't want things just scattered everywhere. You want a nice clean deck that you can work on. There you are, buddy. Yeah, it's like perfect, perfect, perfect size. I'm using a 2 watt hook for the octopus hook. Get him right in the nose. And then a size 4 2x strong treble hook in the back. Just like that. And then now you can adjust the line, but that's pretty good. I want him to have good free movement. Looking good, bud. Looking good. Yeah, look at this. Oh man, that's that's the work of a big one. Missed it. I don't know, man. Look at that. <sighs> I 
pulled so hard that it r almost ripped the head off. Ah, we'll fry him up later. I think you're right, Dad. It's coming down quite nicely now. Yeah. I'm hooked up. Please be the right kind. Please be the right kind. Hoping it's the right kind. Ooh, big shark. Oh, it's a seven gill. What's the legal length on a seven gill? I'm not sure. Guys, I just hooked into a seven gill. I have no idea what the legalities are on a seven gill. What's the length to keep? Look at that thing. It's at least four feet, I think. It's at least a four footer. Hey, you need help? Someone Google it. <laughs> I hear they're good eating. Google, Google, Google. I'm down to keep this bad boy. Working on it. Call Leroy Reprogal. Well, then it sounds like we're eating him. That's good. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, no problem. You'll have to let me know how it is. Will do. I'm gonna have to gut him on board. Ooh. Oh, he didn't like that. Right when I said I'm gonna gut him. This is gonna be tricky.
Secured. Oh. Let's start by putting him on the stringer. Okay. Now we need to gut him. Seven gills secured, boys. Thanks. Fortunately, had enough time to play him until you were able to find out that it's legal to take. Yeah, I'm surprised all your gear was able to hold up. First ever seven gill. Put up a great, great fight. All right, so the outro that was on Adam's channel was filmed like this because he's so tall. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like this. It's basically like that. Sorry. But uh, but yeah, this was pretty fun. Pretty much matched uh, Adam with his catches all the way down to that seven gill. So if you guys want to see another seven gill battle, because that doesn't really happen too often on a kayak, especially on his channel. Yeah, never. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So if you want to see another one, apparently his battle was crazier, and he didn't want to what. Not too much spoiler alert, he didn't keep his, but it's actually so much more challenging to land a fish. Did you remove the hook? Oh, did you remove I, the hook? I got it all the way to the hook, so I didn't quite get the hook sound, unfortunately, but as close as I could with the Yeah, and probably just snipped it, but good fight. Adam? Thanks, man. Of course, yeah, thanks for taking me out here and showing me around. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'll be back. Whew. This is actually our second time fishing together. Maybe third time is going to be like super, super epic. Off the hook. Off the hook. Maybe that'll be the salmon. Yeah. yeah so if you want to see this guy get some salmon, leave him a comment or something. Give him some motivation. Yeah. <laughs> comment and some likes or whatever those are. <laughs> and we're back, guys. We are at home. Kayaks all cleaned up. And the seven gill is on ice. We gutted the fish and brained it and bled it while we were out on the water and it was actually very interesting to do that all on the kayak such a small platform to be able to handle such a fish i, I will get an official weight on that thing just to see in terms of scale uh, also going to get a measurement on it and post it right here so the plan is to fillet up the front half and then stake up the back half. So stake up the tail end and then fillet the front end. So here's our shark. In order to keep a uniform thickness, I'm gonna cut it at a bias so that each piece will be the same thickness all throughout because I want it all to cook evenly. It feels almost like a fibrous, squid or like a almost like a scallop we're gonna do a simple garlic butter we want to really let the fish still come through but we want it to be good and what's not good without 
butter. <laughs> and we did get some tips, uh, spe specifically from our friend Danny Wu. He actually said that shark doesn't really have that much oil in the meat, like some fish that really keeps moist. So something in terms of a recipe that includes some sort of oil really helps to keep the fish moist. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a bit of butter, just a little dab of butter and garlic. Let that melt down. And we're gonna do this pretty much on a low heat. We don't wanna cook it too fast because sometimes if you cook something too fast, that's when it gets super rubbery. And that's what we're afraid of. We've actually gotten mixed messages on what seven gill shark is like. Uh, one of our friends, Carl, said that it's super rubbery, but Leroy said from what he's seen, it should flake apart like a real fish, so that's, or like normal fish. So that's something that we're pretty excited to find out. So that's what we're doing here. We're seeing if seven gill tastes any good. And if it does, then great, good thing we caught it and there's a lot of it, but we're probably gonna let a lot of our friends try it too. So, cause we got a lot of meat from this thing. It was a 22 and a half pounds, fully dressed, without the guts, without all the blood that was in it. And then that was part of the whole thing is when I was on that kayak, I had to make sure that it had no guts left. I had to make sure that we were able to bleed it out thoroughly and get it on ice right away. We left the water not too long after catching this fish. So let's see what it's like. Just gonna add some salt. We wanna keep it pretty simple. I don't wanna overpower this thing because I wanna see what flavors come through. Yeah, I pretty much just wanna keep it pure. So seafood, garlic butter, salt. So this is crushed garlic. Let it kind of caramelize a little bit. Get all throughout that butter so that flavor is all mixed in. Little more butter. That one's for you, Mats. A little more butter. First piece is going on. <laughs> you want to be able to watch it cook all the way through, starting from the bottom, moving up. Once it's about two thirds of the way through in terms of that white coming up and it's still translucent on the top, then you flip it. What I think I should have done is I should have patted it dry because you could actually see all of the liquids coming out of it. Next time I'll, I'll definitely pat it dry because one time we did leopard shark on the channel and we made tacos and those little pieces, you could literally squeeze it and the juice comes out. Maybe next time if we wanted it to be a little drier, it'd probably be a good idea to pat it down. So that's what we're seeing here. Homegrown squash. Yep, homegrown squash out of our garden. Super tender, it seems. Me too. Seems pretty tender. Well. Well. Moment of truth. Seven gill shark, garlic, butter, sauteed. A with little lemon. A little bit of lemon and salt. On the side, we have nochi, we have broccoli, and homemade squash, homegrown squash from our garden. <laughs> <laughs> homemade. Homemade. <laughs> Actually, they were grown from seedlings. I really like gardening, and so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how do you feel? I'm a little nervous, but I think it'll be good. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. I think it looks a little bit on the blander side since we try to keep it so simple and super um, flavorful, like just the shark flavor. I'm nervous because it's a shark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's going to be people in the comments that are going to say, oh, karma, um, be careful now because you eat a shark. Anyway, let's not go down that path. No, no, no. no. We're not going down. And there's going to be somebody in the comments who's going to be like, oh, you shouldn't eat too much shark because of mercury content and whatever. So yeah. get, let's get that out of the way now before we try this. But um, let's test the softness because some people say that it could be rubbery. So let's do that. Let's just... Take our fork. Together. Oh. It flakes. Oh. Yeah. Are you surprised? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was going to be tougher to, to cut, fork it out. Yeah. Look at I that. Mean, that's pretty that's pretty tender. Yeah, that's, that's pretty tender. You're going to chop up all your food. Look huh? at that. It's tender. Interesting. 
Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm excited. All right. Let's do this together, honey. Okay. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. It's really good. <laughs> and garlic hits nice. Mmm. The fish is super good. It doesn't even taste like it's not fishy at all. Texture is nice. It's like a scallop. It is like a scallop. Oh. Wow. Based on people's like, you know, what they were saying it's going to be like. Definitely different than I thought. It's totally not rubbery. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it was Carl said or something. Yeah, mm. but cooking it low and slow kind of helped, and then that's good. The thing that you really have to be careful about with shark is you have to bleed it out fast. Mm. You have to remove the guts really fast, or else the ammonia from their bodies will start seeping through the meat and in out through the skin. So you'll notice when I was on the kayak, I I gutted that thing right away and job, started bleeding it and then uh, cut the last vertebra on the tail right before the tail to let more of that um, blood go through but it mm. came out pretty interesting those homegrown squashes mm -hmm. that's good so how does it compare let's say to like thresher shark oh i think thresher shark's a little firmer <clears throat> like we did we did thresher shark tacos one night and and it's definitely more of a taco meat. It's got a little like firmness and a little more bite to it. This is like very, very tender. Super tender. Yeah. Like it, it kind of melts. You barely have like to use butter. your teeth. It's like butter. Mm -hmm. I think half of the butter we put into the little unplugging thing. <laughs> half of the butter we put into the pot went into the meat. <laughs> and it, it is juicy, guys. It's super, super juicy. It is. Like... Once you put a piece in your mouth and squeeze down with your tongue, mm. it just... You don't even have to bite. You don't. So much. That's so good. Yeah. I'm shocked. Are you shocked? Yeah. Yeah, I am. You know, it's kind of similar also to... Um, what's that fish we get from Albertsons? The sea bass. Chilean sea bass. Chilean sea bass. Similar to Chilean mm -hmm. sea bass. Yeah. Really, mm -hmm. really similar. Mm-hmm. Wow. It is similar to that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's really soft. It, it's it's like a scallop. It's strange. Mm. I'll see them though. Are there any lingering yeah. flavors at all, like after you take a bite? No. Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't even have a fish flavor at all. Like, it doesn't have a fish taste. So it's clean. It's super clean. Yeah. And there must be a healthy population of these mm -hmm. sharks where we fish today because... Adam Die Hard Fishing also caught one, so the video to the link to his video is actually down below if you want to go check out his channel as well. But yeah, there's there's not a lot of reasons not to try it. As soon as Adam went on the radio and said, uh, "It looks like according to Google, you can keep one and no size limit," the curiosity got to me, and I'm like, I, I definitely need to try that. A good thing. I like it. Yeah, because there's like probably a good 20 pounds of meat on that thing. So uh, I do have some friends that I'm going to give Pack some to, let them try it. What did you say? Pack the fridge. We got to go back. Yeah. We need to get more fish in our freezer, but hopefully mm -hmm. this was a good adventure and it yielded one halibut and one seven gill shark. And these things get really big too. This mm -hmm. was a five foot fish, but... It's not uncommon to see them in the 7 to 10 foot range. Mm. So this is actually the perfect eating size. Yeah, that's really good. And thank you to those that went kayaking with Edward. Jay wasn't kayaking alone because that makes me super nervous. So thanks, Adam. And thank you, Martin. I know you made it out. Martin made it out, right? Mm -hmm. Mario was like a... Uh, Oh, it was an old town. It was an old town crew. Yeah. That's what it yeah. was. Yeah, it was Team Old Town all the way. Adam had mm -hmm. his Autopilot 120. Mario had his Sportsman 120. And Martin also has mm -hmm. an Old Town Big Water. And if you guys are interested in that kayak, it's not technically sponsored or anything. Uh, but if you were interested in one of those kayaks, you could definitely check it out in the link below. 
Also, don't forget to check out that knife, Morkniff. Uh, don't forget to check out Carlos's page with that gaff. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing gaff. It went right through that shark. Super, super easy. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was just a really good trip. Do I have really a kayak trip. coming in? Oh, that's another surprise. Veronica actually has a Salty PDL coming. It's the Old Town Sportsman Salty PDL. It's a 12-foot kayak. They say that it's going to ship out in the next two weeks, so we're going to see Veronica on a kayak here pretty soon. Uh-oh. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be really good. And It'll I got be... a gaff, too. Yeah, that purple one is actually Veronica's gaff, mm -hmm. and she gets to put her fish on it, so that's going to be one of the trips here. Probably maybe next month, end of next month, so definitely stay tuned for that. Who's that? It's, oh. it's the box. The box had a baby buck. On that note, we love you. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye. Money bait, money bait. I got the money bait. Spanish mackerel. Yes, money bait, money bait, money bait. I got the money bait. Oh no! That was the best bait all day. Ugh. <laughs> I've heard these are good too. I don't know. I never tried it personally. I guess it depends on who you ask. Because yeah. my my buddy told me, ugh. <laughs> He's a ugh. It got right in the corner. I left the hook in. So here's a shot of what it actually looks like in the corner of the fish's mouth. <laughs>